When was the last time you took a leap of faith trusting that everything is going to work out? Do you crave growth or are you merely content with the status quo? If you want more out of your life, out of your career, and out of your relationships, you are in the right place. Take the leap and discover how to create a life by design rather than living it by default. Real success starts with you. Now here's your host, Colleen Biggs. You are in for a treat today. You have downloaded one of the episodes from our Speak Up to Lead Up series, where we interview powerful leaders who have chosen to lead up without asking permission. Enjoy the show. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to another episode of Lead Up for Women, Speak Up to Lead Up. You may be able to tell that I sound a little bit more subdued. I don't know what the word is. Sexy? No, I don't ever go for that. Uh, I have a new mic. My other mic seemed like I was screaming, and it just, you know, I had that mic for three years. Everyone told me the Blue Yeti was, like, amazing. So I was on a podcast the other day, and they were talking about my sound, and as a podcast host, we should know about our sound, right? Obviously, I, I didn't, and so uh, I ordered a new mic, and I'm in love with this mic because it mutes my voice. It's just really good the way that the sound is and how it takes the echoes out of the background. So everyone gets a new sound today. So we'll see how it works out. I'd love your feedback. If you want to give me some feedback about my sound, you can always email us at info at leadupforwomen.com. You know, we have a lot going on in Lead Up for Women, ladies. We have events every single week on Tuesdays where our members come forward and teach, a teaching Tuesday. This last Tuesday, which was yesterday, uh, because we're recording this, you know, live, uh, we did um, a teaching Tuesday where we did tarot card reading. That was really fun, where she was reading uh, the attendees that were there, uh, something totally different than we normally do. You know, the week before that, we were talking about Instagram influencing, and the week before that, we're talking about um, had a business plan. So we have all different types of industries of women that represent female entrepreneurs that come on every week. So I want to invite you to click on the link. Come join us for a free webinar on a Tuesday. I think you'll have a lot of fun um, and be motivated, inspired, and educated. That's what it's all about, right? Because if learning is beneath us, then leadership is beyond us. And we want to make sure that we're stepping into who we are and being leaders, especially as women. Now is the time for us to step up and, um, you know... I was asked to uh, be on, on Clubhouse and come in and share with six other women. Uh, we were talking about uh, how our businesses had grown and changed and evolved during the pandemic. And I literally purchased an iPhone because I'm an Android user just because everybody keeps sending me invites for Clubhouse, bugging me about Clubhouse. It's not that I don't want to be on Clubhouse. It's just that it's another opportunity to show up to uh, be heard. And when my plate is full, I'm thinking if I say yes to something else, I need to be saying no to something. So just remember that if we're saying yes for another opportunity, remember you're saying no to something. So what are you saying no to? And we all have to make sure that we're preparing for that because as women, we tend to say yes, 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 yes. Our plates get overloaded because we are super women and we understand that and we can do a lot. But if our cups are empty, we are not pouring anything into anyone else. And that's what we live for. It's what we serve for. So we need to be filling our cups all the time. So just remember, even though I want to be on Clubhouse really bad and, and have a presence on there, it's just going to have to wait until the time is right for me. And I have to say no to something else. And when I'm prepared to do that, I'll show up on Clubhouse. So until then... Uh, I will see you guys on some of these other opportunities that have been coming up, like Nicole and I were talking about Lunch Club and so many other networking opportunities uh, I could give shout outs to out there. And I'm constantly advertising events that you can go to that expand your in influence so you can attract more clients. So if you're interested in that, you should be signing up for our newsletter at leadupforwomen.com. All right, ladies, I'm super excited because today we're talking about how women are powerful beings. Now, I know we all know that as women that are listening to this already, but let's talk about what powerful really means. And my first guest is a VIP member of Lead Up for Women. She's my co-host today, and her name is Nicole Snell. Nicole, welcome to the show. I'm super excited to have you here today. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. You look beautiful. Pink is a great color for you. 
Thank you. I love it. I consider it my power color. I would say it's a power color for sure. And for those of you listening on the podcast right now, you can click on the link. You can go over to our Facebook page and see any of these videos or go out to YouTube and see any of these videos that are out there uh, so you can check them out. So you can see how beautiful Nicole looks today in her uh, power color, pink. And I love that Vivian's actually got pink on today too. So I think that works out really, really well for, for, and I wore black and white, like, come on, Colleen, what were you thinking? I should have at least tried to coordinate (laughs) colors with my guests today. But what I love about Nicole is I was introduced to her through a really good friend of mine, uh, Dr. Lori Monaco, who is another badass, uh, super powerful female. And she's like, you have got to meet Nicole because she uh, is in an organization called Girls Fight Back. And, you know, she teaches self-defense. And I was like, oh, girl, I am in. Introduce me to her because, as many of you know, I'm a first-degree black belt. I've taught self-defense to the youth. Um, I have been in, you know, part of self-defense myself, learning self-defense, just being in Taekwondo for four and a half years, you learn a lot about self-defense, but I took self-defense classes. So when I met Nicole, it was like, we were just like two peas in a pod. So Nicole, will you tell our listeners a little bit about you and how you got into the role of Girls Fight Back? How'd that start for you? I would love to. (laughs) Yeah. So I was in TV production for about 12 years, and during my, uh, my last production job, I was an executive at, um, at a big international production company, and we were getting, our entire department was getting laid off, and around that same time, I was contacted by uh, my old college that they had been contacted by the military to do sexual assault prevention trainings at installations around the world. And I thought, well, this is a great chance for me to try to do something new. You know, I wanted to do more to help women and more to, you know, advocate for sexual assault survivors. And I thought that the universe was kind of laying this out. You know, I was being laid off on one job and now I have this new opportunity. So I started doing that work. And through that work, I met the owners of Girls Fight Back and I saw their website. I saw what they did. And I thought, how do I get involved? I want to travel to colleges and teach women about self-defense. How do I become a speaker? So I reached out and I asked for a job and they didn't have any jobs available, but about three months later they did. And I got trained and I, part of the training included graduating from a 20 hour full contact self-defense class, which I did. And then I wanted to be an instructor for them too. So I concurrently started as a junior speaker, junior national speaker with Girls Fight Back and an assistant at Impact. And over the six years I progressed, I became a senior national speaker with Girls Fight Back. I became a lead instructor with Impact. And in 2020, the opportunity came for me, the the opportunity arose for me to purchase Girls Fight Back. And they were selling and I thought I had lived and breathed this material. I, I believe in it so much. And the mission, you know, that it was started by a woman named Erin Weed in 2001. So it's been almost 20 years. It was started by Erin Weed in honor of her friend, Shannon McNamara. And so I wanted to keep Shannon's memory alive. I wanted to continue doing this work. And I thought I can take this and I can, I can run with it. And I bought it during the pandemic, which is the scariest thing to start a new business in the pandemic, but I did. And here I am. It's so exciting. And congratulations. I, to take ownership of a company that you've worked with for six years, that's just amazing. And I remember having the conversation and you were scared to death. You're like, I don't know what I'm doing here, taking on this, this ownership, but what, I mean, what is one of the lessons that you've learned from just taking the leap of faith and saying, I can do this. I believe in myself. I've lived and breathed this for this long. How hard can it be to run the company? What, what is some of the aha moments that have come up with you that not only have been difficult for you, because I think if we were to paint this picture as all roses, it never is when you own a business. It never is. So we should never lie and go, oh yeah, it's just been the most amazing journey it's, it's a tough journey. And a lot of times we fail forward. So what are some of the lessons that you've learned and, and some of the things that you really didn't even anticipate in this new entrepreneurship journey? Man, there was so much that I didn't anticipate. I am a type A personality. I am organized. I make lists. I like to research every aspect of something before I go ahead with it so that I feel like I'm prepared and aware. I did as much research as I could, but there's still so much that I didn't know. Just the paperwork of getting set up 
and incorporating and having to talk to the IRS and talk to new insurance and, you know, getting set up with your books, all of those things. But I think the most important thing was that you're never going to have all the answers ever. You can do all the research. You're going to talk to one person that's going to tell you one thing. You're called back the same place. Someone else will give you another answer. You're never going to have all the answers. It's never going to be perfect. You're constantly learning and you just have to kind of roll with it and do the best you can get as much information as you can reach out and get as much support as you can. The SBDA has been an incredible resource. They're free. The small business development association, Mm -hmm. they give you free consultations depending on what aspect of your business you need help with. So just finding, finding resources like that. And now I can share those with other women entrepreneurs or any entrepreneur that asks me for help, but really just understanding that I'm not going to know it all. I just can, I can only do my best and learn from the mistakes. Yeah, that's so true, isn't it? We can only do our best and and there isn't any more that we can do after that. And I think that's a great lesson to learn that, you know, we're if we're putting forward our best foot and we're doing everything that we can and we're reaching out and asking for help and getting resources and surrounding yourself with community like you are with Lead Up for Women, a community that's going to help you get expansion, exposure. You know, these are the things we need to be doing. So now that you're in April, talk to me a little bit about how things are going for you, because this, you know, this has been several months in the making. And I got a note from you the other day and you're like, April has just been crazy awesome for me. Talk to us about what's going on and what are you doing? Well, when the pandemic hit, all of our, all of my presentations before then had always been live. So of course now we're in a pandemic, nothing's live. I had to pivot and figure out how to bring my program to the virtual space, which I'm very happy to say that I was able to convert it and keep it interactive and engaging. And so I've just been, you know, planting the seeds and reaching out to people and staying connected and letting them know what I offer and how important I think it is and how I can help empower their communities. And now that things are starting to open up a bit, and I feel like, especially for April, because April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, which is usually a really busy time for me and for, you know, other advocates and sexual assault prevention programs and domestic violence speakers and such. So this has actually been one of my busiest Aprils. And it's just the amount of people that I'm able to reach this month virtually has just been incredible. And to get feedback from people that says, you know, your program helped me feel more confident, or I now feel like I can go solo backpacking because of you, or now I feel like I have options or any of those, like, that's why I do this work. I would do this Mm -hmm. work every day of the month to be able to know that I'm reaching people and helping women feel confident living their life and not feeling like they have to limit themselves. So it's just been incredible. And I am hoping that the the momentum keeps up as people realize how important this, I mean, I feel like people always understood how important self-defense is, yeah. but I just feel like there's a little bit of a shift happening um, in society. And I think that people are really understanding how boundary setting and things all tie in, which are things I talk about. And I'm just hoping that I can continue to do this work in, in, in empower communities everywhere. Yeah. So I think, from what I understand and me being through self-defense myself, it's for every female. There isn't a female it's not for. So if you want to learn how to be confident, like I was telling Nicole, the one thing that my husband never worried about me when I traveled around the country and around the world for the past so many years, I was always traveling by myself month after month after month. And he never worried about me because I always knew where you knew knew my surroundings, knew you know knew where I was. I was paying attention, and I knew how to defend myself. And knowing that gives you this self of this kind of sense of um, confidence, and you you don't worry as much, you know, where you are. In fact, I actually feel sorry for anyone who would attempt to attack me uh, at any point. I always say, and I have it in my head that. <laughs> I feel sorry for any person that would ever try and attack me because it's going to be a bad day for them. And I will be free to let them know that with my voice if anyone was to ever attack me, like you picked the wrong girl to attack. But we need to feel that way, right? We need to walk around with that sense of confidence. How can they do that through your programs, Nicole? Like how can people find you online? How can they feel that sense of confidence and what, what is the opportunities for them? I love what you said about you, you would think that you're the wrong one. That's one of the things that I say is I want all of us to be that somebody that nobody wants to mess with. And we are, we just need to believe it in ourselves and understand the power we have in our bodies. We are a weapon. 
our bodies are already a weapon and we just need to believe it and know that we're worth fighting for. So my website, NicoleSnell.com has everything. It has a list of all the programs that I offer. I speak at colleges, corporations. I speak to the military. I speak to private groups, realtors, BIPOC organizations, hiking groups, retreats, anyone that needs a speaker that is looking to learn self-defense. And I focus just as much on the verbal and the non-physical as the physical, because those are the things we use every day. Colleen, I don't know about you or, or Vivian, you, when was the last time you heel pumped someone in the face? But I can guarantee we probably have all used a verbal strategy to set a boundary with somebody within the last week. And those are the things that we're using the most often. So I focus a lot on that and how we can feel empowered in that way. And then I teach the physical as well. And, um, and just like you said, having that confidence of knowing that you have options, knowing that you are capable of being your own best protector, knowing that you are worth fighting for can just change how you walk through the world. And that alone can be a deterrent to somebody who's looking to, to assault you, victimize you, take advantage of a situation. And the research supports that in saying that people who learn self-defense, women especially who've taken a self-defense class have reduced their risk of experiencing violence by up to 50%. That is huge. Yeah, so true. I'm going to encourage everybody out there to check out her website and to get in contact with Nicole. Nicole, you're also on Instagram too. Don't you do some videos on Instagram? I do. Yeah. So I'm on Instagram. My um, I have Girls Fight Back on Instagram. And then my personal hashtag. Um, handle is adventures of Nick and that's N I K. And I have a series called outdoor defense. And twice a month, I put out a quick video on how we can use self-defense to explore the outdoors, to hike solo, camp solo, backpack mm. solo. And I've been doing that series since 2019 and I'm on season two and I've got 36 episodes out. That's great. Thank you so much. And congratulations on that. So you guys have to go follow Nicole and girls fight back because um, again, like she said, we use it every day in our verbal, even if, you know, most of the states are opening up now and we're getting back out and we're starting to do events in person. We're starting to meet in person. I'm going away on a retreat next weekend. So I'm really excited to be doing that. So, and I'm going to be out in the wild, like at a farm. So, you know, you even need to know self-defense <laughs> around animals. I'm just being real with that. We need to know about our environment. So uh, th this is a great opportunity for us to, you know, be a more powerful being and really understand that we need to be protecting ourselves, not only physically, but verbally, because we need to be setting those boundaries um, as women. And those boundaries haven't always been there. But knowing this and mothers that are out there getting your children and your daughters and your youth involved in this can really cut down a lot of the issues that we have with women being kidnapped and so many other things that are happening because they're just not aware of their surroundings or what's happening or they're not protecting themselves. So again, if you want your daughters to be independent, and especially when they go to college, uh, this is a great opportunity. So Nicole, Thank you so much for joining us. We have all of your contact information right there at the tip of their fingers so they can click on that and follow you. So I'm highly recommending you reach out to Nicole. Uh, she is an amazing individual, especially if you're doing a retreat, uh, want her as a speaker or teacher or trainer, uh, or you own a company. This is a really great opportunity to be empowering women. So thank you, Nicole. Thank you so much. It's been thank great you. having you here. All right, Vivian, the creator, chef, and host of Dishing It, Girlfriend, all about the food, all about the food. So I've been to the Dominican Republic. You were born there, and I've only been there once, just once. I'll, t I'll tell you all about my experience. Uh, but you were raised in Brooklyn, so really, does that count? Like, how long did you really live in the Dominican Republic? <laughs> I lived there for two years and then two years, so from 10 to 12 okay. and 12 to 14. Okay, got it. So uh, so, so you've done so much. I don't even know where to start. I'm, I'm just going to highlight a few things that you're the first of eight siblings to graduate college for one, right? So I think that's crazy. You, um, I have seven kids, but you have eight siblings, which means there's nine children. Is that right in your family or is there more? No, no, no. I'm the seventh in descending order. There's eight. Seventh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. And, uh, you were the first to have a successful marriage. I, I don't know about you, but I had two fail and now I'm in a successful one. I don't know if that counts, but that counts. it no. all counts. Okay. I think it counts, uh, but she's 20 years strong in her marriage. So congratulations, Vivian. We always want to celebrate women when they find their soulmate and are able to have that love 
Uh, now, we're talking about Harvey Levin from TMZ. So you, um, did he train you or talk to me about, you were in moral court. So you, you've had times on Days of Our Lives. You've had times, so again, I think when Nicole mentioned that she was in production, you were like, hey, what? You've done producing? She, she was all over that. You guys have way more in common. It's so interesting to me how much that we've actually done. Uh, and having our resume that most people don't even know about. Why? Because women tend to not shout from the mountaintops about, look at me, look at what I do. Vivian, this is your chance today to <laughs> shout from the mountaintops about <laughs> everything you've done and how that has molded you into who you are today. So let's start with that. I mean, let's talk about what are some of your biggest accomplishments that are on your resume that you feel have really made an impact for you or was a pivotal moment for you that molded you to what you do today? Wow. I thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here, by the way. <laughs> this has been amazing. You ladies are so strong. You're a black belt. You do self-defense. I need to sign up for things or carry the two of you in my backpack. I don't know. <laughs> I, um, I have to say that I moved a lot in life and that helped me really adjust. I moved about 23 times to date. When I rewind and start with how I ended up on moral court, it started with uh, auditioning and getting my VHS tape stacked up and coming home on that train that led me to meet my husband on the train on the way home from graduating from Brooklyn College. From there, shortly after, I ended up in California because I auditioned for Stu Billet, who owns People's Court, and I beat out 300 women. And then I had to warm up the crowd on moral court. And I am not a comedian and that wasn't in my wheelhouse, but just knowing that I wanted it so bad, that I was so driven, that this was mine. I think that defined what my energy has been since. It's like on steroids now. Since then I was on 24, did a little cameo. I was on Days of Our Lives. I was a diva, Maya <laughs> Liano. I don't know if that's a surprise. I was on Howard Stern to prove I had the hots for him, which only came as a result of doing moral court. And it was just like a whirlwind of affirmations that I'm where I should be. And it felt really great. Then I felt old. And I, uh, at 26, and I decided that we needed to recalibrate. And that's when I joined the auto show as a presenter for Infinity and GMC. And I found a new audience, a new stage, and had so much fun. And 10 years went by, and I had this mystery health crisis, and I started losing my hair. Didn't know what the hell was going on. My stomach was out to here. I mean, my joints hurt. I would pass out. It was horrendous. And I thought I was dying. And then I went on anti seizure medications because that's what conventional medicine said to do. And it ended up leading to quote unquote a leaky gut and then not leaving my house because of the migraines and feeling suicidal as a result of it and then going to a shrink finally and seeking help and she said to me and I thought she was insane at the time I think you got celiac I know this woman who actually killed somebody because she was gluten intolerant and I'm like you have I'm in a fun house right now but then I went home and after flipping the table in anxiety and frustration I uh I said well what if she's right <laughs> And that was when I discovered that um, three months of cleansing, endoscopies and whatnot, that food does have a huge effect on your um, body, on your emotions, on your in, everything. It hijacks you. And I had no clue. I thought I was eating healthy and I wasn't. So I learned a lot about GMOs and getting back on track. And it led me to, again, feeling old. I was doing the auto show. I was only eating a quinoa and a tomato on the road and pff, rashes everywhere and all this horrendous stuff. And, and I was always seeking that golden star, right? If I was thinking, you know, like if I, if, if somebody loves me, this is, I mean, I don't know why we actors go there and, and spokespeople, we want to be loved so bad. And we, be, we come into an industry that's so insecure, makes us so insecure. Um, but, you know, it was seeking that daddy approval somewhere along the line. And that's kept driving me all the way. <laughs> and so I couldn't do the auto show anymore. So I had to recalibrate again. And so it was, I was old again, <laughs> recalibrating again. And I ended up creating my own show, Dishing It. And that's my latest venture. It's what I am meant to do because it's everything I have in my heart and in my soul. And on Dishing It, I have beautiful, I feed you. And I, I have a chance to celebrate you and, and celebrate your culture. And you can share your heart and 
all the things that you have overcome and persevered. And when you're that leader who has something really incredible as a message, a book, uh, something like that, then you are a dish in it avatar. And I've, I didn't know what was going to happen. So I pivoted and went into creating Dish in It. And I was terrified. And a girlfriend of mine from the auto show, which I thought I had wasted 10 years of my life uh, doing that, which I guess it didn't, because if I hadn't met her, she wouldn't have been the fire plug, the little producer that helped me create my first episode. Mm -hmm. So 2018, Tony Robbins with my husband, major aha moments as to how I had to take control of my life and how I had been so generous and so busy helping everybody else except me. And that's when I needed to say, well, it's time now. Then, of course, COVID hit. So I went to Unblinded, which became my community. I was totally rocked by Sean Callagy. He's a mentor of mine and joined his mastery business program. Don't know anything about business, but I am becoming an entrepreneur today. So I, <laughs> I, I ended up having my first interview then which was now fast forwarding from the high production to COVID and through about six episodes are canned now and having to figure out how to do it virtually. So instead of feeling like this was over, I now had enough confidence and certainty in myself that I can make it happen. So my husband and I started filming. We use our iPhones. Welcome to the iPhones, Colleen. And 11 Pro that I have. And he uses his. I use my laptop as we have here. And then I get editors to do it. So now I have, fast forward during COVID, nine episodes later, I'm creating a Dish in a Divine dining experience that's going to be virtual as well, where I will select a group of people that can go on a year's journey with me so that we can have foods from around the world. And at the end, I'll offer a beautiful cookbook and I have to figure out all of that stuff. So I don't have that yet on April 21st on Thursday at dishinit.live. I encourage whoever's interested in this to come and join me for that. And um, I do this because I am so driven and tortured and there's just no other way. This is, this is what I have to do. And I'm energetic. I host uh, also... Um, Sean Callagy's Real Raw, Adam Blinded, and I do this and I do a gazillion things and I just love to give and sprinkle joy everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I just can't feel your passion. I wish you were more passionate, Vivian. I'm struggling <laughs> with getting the passion to come through to our listeners. I love your energy. I love what you bring to the table. It's exactly why I wanted to interview you because every time I've ever met you, uh, every single time I'm like, oh, I just feel like a better person around Vivian. Don't you, Nicole? You just feel like a better person around Vivian. And Vivian, it's so interesting to me. And I want to go back and anchor in something that you said. You have done a lot with a lot of people, right? You've got a lot of cred. Howard Stern is actually one of my favorite. And most people don't like them, don't like him. A lot of women don't like him because they don't understand his shtick, I guess, is what it is. He is like the kindest, most gentle kind person, right? And he puts on like this persona of whoever this person is because it makes people laugh and it's funny and it's whatever, but he's not that way in real life. Um, so I've always loved listening to him because I felt like he was always really raw, right? He just says it how it is. And a lot of people don't like that, but I think that's, you know, being transparent. And so I want to go back to all of these different things that you did in your life has led to this moment. If you didn't have the health uh, crisis that you went through, if you hadn't, um, you know, been on all the shows that you have done or stepped in as an actress, you know, to, to be someone else, you were, you know, officially being someone else in a different role, you know, with the insecurities that you had all that time to really discover and lean into the vivacious Vivian that we see today in front of us, like you had to go through all of those experiences, hit those hurdles, you know, have to go through that, uh, take action to get to where you are today. And that is what I love about someone like Vivian, like you, Vivian, how you bring that forward for us, because you are exactly who you're meant to be today. And that is what you're delivering and what your purpose is to the world, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's enlightening to see how powerful you can be in all your roles that you've played, but how powerful today you're going to be saving lives because there are other people out there that don't realize how important the food we eat is for our bodies. I know Nicole's shaking her head because it it's everything. It is what makes up our bodies. And now you're teaching people how to eat 
in a way that is healthy and clean and can heal their bodies versus all of the medical issues that you went through. What was one of the, would you say when you put this together, what was the real reason behind dishing it? What, what was it that you really wanted to bring to the world? We have in my household, because I, I feel like I am an international person. My, my father's we're from Spain and Dominican. My husband's Italian. It looks like the UN. My, my friends are from Romania, the Netherlands, uh, Africa, Nigeria, Colombia, Puerto Rican. I mean, there's just an amalgamation of friends at my household all the time. We're in a place right now that it's critical more than ever to really celebrate each and every one of us for how special we really are. And for me, it was important that that we all use that as a vehicle to unite, to include for to have inclusion and diversity. And when I was sick, I and I couldn't eat. One of the things I love the most is eating a lot, eating a lot of different things, having spicy food, going to exotic places, having Ethiopian food, discovering, eating Greek food. Mm-hmm. I mean, to have such limitations kind of got me to make that all at home healthy. So that was kind of part of it. And then I, did, I wanted to have these conversations. I wanted to have the global conversations and celebrate what makes us unique because I wasn't celebrated growing up. So, you know, I think it's important because I, I wonder like whom I would be if I had been encouraged. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? But, but that's not what it was meant to be. It's not. It's you were meant to go through what you went through to have the wisdom and experience to become the Vivian that you are today, which is a, which is probably even a better version than maybe you would have been if you were encouraged. And I think many of us as women can go back and say, we weren't encouraged to be the best version of who we could be at that time, right? And um, maybe some of us weren't able to speak up. And that's why we're here to talk about how powerful we are today. If we just tap in, it's not, uh, it's not outside of us. It's existed this entire time inside of us. Sometimes it takes a role or a change in your life or a crisis to really bring that to the surface and other women that can support you in that journey as well. I'm really excited, Vivian, for what you're doing and what you're bringing to some people that that choose not to travel or can't travel, uh, that they can come and experience that with you in April and ongoing. Uh, you said April 26, was that right? <laughs> when did you say that date was? I think that's what you April said. April 26, but it might be April 22nd for all I know. Okay. Do. Right Find that date and let us know. And then it's April 22nd at six o'clock, <laughs> April 22nd at six o'clock. So everyone listening to this is going to be listening to this before April 22nd at six o'clock. So they're going to have the opportunity to go out there to be able to watch it, subscribe. Uh, how do they find it? Talk, talk to us about that, Vivian. How do they find it? So you can go to dishinit.live and email me, or you can go to Instagram at dishinit underscore TV. Or if you want to peruse my Instagram as well, it's Vivian Inc. Either way, I'll find you. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I'm going to ask them to go find you and subscribe and, and start following you. You know, this is the, our opportunity, ladies, um, that are listening to us today for us to expand our education a little bit and expand our views and get to know some other people and tap into the resources that they offer. Uh, that's what I love about the digital world today and the technology that we have today. This is a silver lining that's come out of a lot of what has happened over the last couple of years. So we might as well embrace it and take advantage of it. And it, things will things are going to get back in person. We're going to be doing a lot of things back in person. But I do love the digital world, and I love being able to connect with women all over the world uh, and being able to um, have those conversations because we are women the same. You know, in every world, we have this golden thread that binds us together as sisterhood. And our responsibility is to help each other light their lamps and keep their lamps lit, not steal the oil from other women. You know, that's our, that's our responsibility, ladies. Let's band together and support each other. Uh, be there for other women. And, and I'm going to send everyone I know your way, Nicole, as well as Vivian's way, uh, because everything we're doing is about taking care of ourselves so we can be the most powerful beings ever. Um, and thank you so much, Vivian, for being a guest today and just bringing just your best self, your best 
itself, girl. It was just absolutely phenomenal having you here, Nicole. Same. Uh, it's, it was an honor having you here today. Uh, and I love what you do. Every single female uh, needs to take part in, in what you have to offer because verbally and physically, we need to know how to protect ourselves. Um, so thank you so much for being with us today. And uh, ladies, we hope you join us next week. But before then... I want to encourage you to go visit with our uh, guests that we had today. Everything is right there at your fingertips for you to click. You can check it out on YouTube. Also on Facebook, we'll have our links in there for you. Uh, but I want you to remember that you are the only you that has ever been, and you are the only you that will ever be. So think about that. How you pioneer your future, it's up to you. So be you, you, just you, and be the best version of you that you can be, and be strong because there's no one out there like you. So thank you so much for joining us. We hope we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on this journey of self-discovery, where you learned the tools to create a life by design. Remember, you are the only you there is, and you are the only you that will ever be. Be you and be strong, because you are brilliant, and the world needs you at your best. We cannot wait for you to join us again next time.